This is the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Life Coach Kelly Hanlon McCormick, and today is episode number 130, FOMO versus JOMO. Welcome to Transforming Anxiety. I'm your host, Kelly McCormick. I'm a mom to two boys, a wife, friend, daughter, and sister, and I'm a certified life coach, yoga teacher, and soon-to-be mindfulness meditation teacher. I'm no stranger to anxiety, and I'm here to teach you how to manage your mind and your emotions so that you, too, can transform anxiety into calm, peace, and whatever you want for your life. I'm so glad you're here. Hey there. Welcome in, wherever you are and whatever you're up to today. Folks, how are we doing this week? What's happening in your world? Are we finding a groove with this whole back to school business? We kind of sort of are around here. How are our hearts doing with the Afghanistan news? And Hurricane Ida. How are all of my people in and around New Orleans? Or if you have family and friends in Louisiana. (sighs) I'm with you, folks. I'm with you. I just talked with my meditation mentor last week. We had a great conversation about how we aren't meditating to become better meditators. It's so that we have reserves to draw on and get through the day, right? So that we have some practice with sitting with our own discomfort. And then when we are faced with difficult news, or headlines, right? In real life, we have some resilience to pull from. It's just that we can get quiet and still and curious enough with our own thoughts and emotions. For sure, it's helpful, but also with those of the people around us as well, because it gives us a practice for that. Meditation doesn't fix everything. I'll be the first to tell you that, But it's a really helpful tool to bring out who we want to be when we're adjusting to a new routine, for instance. When we're asking ourselves how to help with big issues in the world. And just as we're moving through our days, our hours, our minutes even. Yeah? Which, speaking of more on meditation soon, my friends, I'm going to be offering a brand new course that starts in early October. And I'm making it super extra affordable and as accessible for all of you as I can. Because I want all of you to join me. I think we all really need this right now. So keep your ears peeled for that. I'm going to have more info for you very, very soon. All right. So today we're going to talk about FOMO and JOMO. Or rather, FOMO versus JOMO. Because they are kind of an either-or situation. They are two sides of the same coin. But before I get ahead of myself, what are FOMO and JOMO? Now, you've maybe heard of one or both of these by now, and I'd like to just lay it all out and consider how they encourage more anxiety, right? Well, not how both of them do. One of them does, one of them doesn't. But I'd like to consider how they both affect and impact anxiety. Maybe I should say it that way. So FOMO is the fear of missing out. It's that worry we have that if we don't go to the party, or if we don't buy that thing while it's on sale, or if we don't say yes, they'll never ask us again. And we'll be missing out. We'll miss out on the great party that everybody talks about for years. We'll always be the one who wasn't there instead of the one who gets to join in on the telling and the retelling of the great stories and the jokes and the laughs. And if we don't buy the thing, especially if the thing is on sale, then we'll forever be the one who doesn't have that thing. We'll stand out because, at least as our minds tell it to us, everyone else has the thing and we're missing out on the thing. Or if we don't say yes to the job or to the helping out, or the time with our family, that it'll somehow pass us by and we will never get that opportunity again. That it is strictly a once-in-a-lifetime deal. 
Does any of this sound familiar? (laughs) This is all FOMO, right? The fear of missing out. Now, further to that, FOMO isn't even just the fear of missing out on the fun time or the trendy thing or the great opportunity. It's deeper than that. It's our mind convincing us that whatever we're missing out on, it is a fundamentally important experience and other people are getting to have that experience, but not us. So when we believe there's a fundamentally important experience that's available, but that we're somehow missing out, this tends to generate a real sense of isolation, of loneliness, of social exclusion, and, you may have guessed it, anxiety. Now, FOMO is not a new thing. A sense of belonging and a strong desire to be included can be found in ancient texts. They can be found in stories that are thousands of years old. But there's a new tool There's a couple new tools, actually, in the FOMO arsenal. One is social media, and another one is marketing. So social media is one of the biggest generators of FOMO because it basically allows everyone with a device to post a highly curated highlight reel of their life online for public consumption. Social media has given us a very convenient way to compare and contrast our lives to others. And then think about marketing. I think about video games too, using FOMO strategies on us. I know my kids are hooked into certain like special Fortnite events or Pokemon Go challenges or whatever they are, where you can get this one rare, exclusive, super special, one time only limited edition. I have to say this here, virtual, (laughs) it's not real, thing. And so they just have to get online and play so they can't miss it, mom. Right? Has anybody heard this one? Same with marketing. We've all been at uh, at the effect of this one where we felt this. It's the annual sale, right? It's the seasonal flavor. It's the limited availability. It's whatever you can only get it now kind of trick, right? This is usually fake scarcity. Like, you know, they could make pumpkin spice lattes all all year long if they wanted to. Now it's all special and fun in the fall because fall, yay, right? And hey, I love pumpkin spice lattes. I had a pumpkin spice latte earlier today. (laughs) I'm here for all of the pumpkin things and I get it. I don't necessarily want a pumpkin spice latte in mid-June. But there's a run on pumpkin spice lattes in the fall because if you don't get them now, you're going to miss out. It creates scarcity around this item. They can do this around an opportunity. It's a classic marketing tactic these days. You can see it everywhere. Which, I just want to tell you, quick sidebar. One of the reasons that I never close the doors to the Fierce Calm Project is because I don't want to generate fake scarcity with you. I want you to know you can join us anytime. My door is always open to you. So if there were ever a time when that made good sense to me, right? if there were ever a good reason for me to close the doors and then open them only at certain times, maybe I would change things up. But I'm not interested in faking scarcity to get people to buy things. Now, on the other hand, I start a few small group coaching programs, like just a few times a year. It's a six-month program. It's very important to me that we start and that we end as a group. So when you hear me say the Transforming Anxiety Collective is now open, if you're listening to this in real time, actually, it is right now open, you know it's because I'm enrolling the next group. It's not fake scarcity. It's, hey, we're going to start in mid-September, so if you want to join us, come on in. I'll open the doors again, but not until 2022. So just a quick note so you know I'm communicating authentically with you. (laughs) I'm not going to create fake scarcity just because. We have enough of that in our society. So that was my little personal sidebar there. Okay, so FOMO. 
is the fear of missing out. The sense that something essential and something fundamentally important is passing us by and that we will not have another opportunity and that other people are getting a chance at that thing, right? It's usually accompanied by its buddies, isolation, loneliness, social exclusion, and anxiety. But I want to introduce you to the flip side of this coin. I want you to meet the sweeter, kinder, gentler, and sometimes overlooked cousin of FOMO, and that is JOMO, the joy of missing out. So JOMO is the joy of missing out as opposed to the fear. Now, I'm guessing all of my fellow introverts out there are already well aware of JOMO because JOMO is that thrill we get when plans are canceled. (laughs) or we have a free night to read on the couch in our comfiest clothes, right? Jomo is that sense of like cocooning in at home while the rest of the world rushes around outside of our door. It's such a cozy feeling. But Jomo is for all of us. It's not just for the introverts. And Jomo isn't just about staying home and saying no and not buying anything on sale. It's not that simple. Jomo is far more actually, than canceling plans and practicing being introverted. JOMO, at its core, is really about a sense of stillness and presence. Presence. If FOMO is the modern-day version of keeping up with the Joneses, then JOMO is a version of presence and even mindfulness. Because JOMO isn't simply saying no all the time. JOMO is a practice in discerning which options, which invitations, which experiences are right for you. And then knowing which ones you can let go of. Right? FOMO succeeds partly because we are convinced to do things or say yes or go places or buy things that we wouldn't naturally seek out on our own. So if it's not something that you do, even if no one else was doing it, or maybe even especially if no one else was doing it, then it's a signal that you may be in FOMO and acting purely out of fear. On the other hand, it can be a huge relief to sink into JOMO and recognize that, yes, I'm going to miss that party or those boots or that promotion or that whole group of people. And I'm going to do it all from a sense of joy because I'm able to recognize those weren't my things or my people or my opportunity or my event. They were choices, but they just weren't for me. And without the peer pressure or societal expectations or marketing tactics steeped in FOMO, I wouldn't have even considered it. That, my friend, is JOMO. So it's far more than just saying no. It's far more than just staying home. It's far more than simply not going with the current trends and fads. It's a deeper sense of discerning what is real and true and right and aligned with you. It's going all in on the things you want for yourself and practicing JOMO when it's not. So FOMO versus JOMO. There's a lot of FOMO out there, for sure. No shortage. (laughs) JOMO is something you have to cultivate and practice on purpose. It doesn't happen nearly as easily or accidentally as FOMO. But that doesn't make it difficult or impossible. That just means we need to practice. And it's, hey, like everything around here, right? Being discerning And getting present is a practice. And you can ask yourself, am I acting from fear or from joy? That's how you'll know. So one last note, and this sometimes makes it easier for me to see what's what. This is just a good reminder. We are going to miss out either way. If you go to the party, you're going to miss out on the family time or quiet time or extra sleep. You're going to miss out on whatever you're giving up to go to the party. 
right? If you say yes to the job opportunity, you're going to miss out on that parallel work life you would have had with a different, perhaps even better job opportunity. If you say no to the sale or the whatever in the thing everyone is getting, you're saying yes to the money and energy that you saved when you didn't spend your money and energy on that thing. So it's not like the alternative to missing out is not missing out, right? It's just a matter of choosing what you want to miss out on. Does that make sense? And maybe too, you can see how all of this could really jack with your experience of anxiety. When you take action, especially when you're taking consistent action out of fear, right? Because you're fearful of missing out. You're not taking action for great reasons. You're taking action to tamp down fear. It's basically an avoidance tactic. But when instead you're taking action out of joy, you're playing a whole other game. Taking action from a place of joy obviously feels better. And there's far less anxiety there. So in the spirit of an ongoing transformation of the whole anxiety experience, I invite you to consider how would it feel to stay closer to JOMO versus FOMO? And how would that affect your overall feeling state? Would you feel less anxious? Would you feel less anxious if you were living a life of JOMO? Can you reframe any FOMO that you're experiencing and move towards JOMO? Because remember, we're always missing out on something. So we might as well frame it as joy rather than fear. All right, my friends, that's it from me today. Remember, meditation is coming. I'm going to be sharing details about that brand new course. It's a six-week course. I'll be sharing details about that later this month so that you can get signed up. We're going to start on Monday, October 4th. So if you're listening to this podcast, make sure you've subscribed. I'll be sharing a couple bonus episodes for more on that. And hey, if you're listening to this episode actually on Apple Podcasts, I would really love it if you could rate and review the show. Some of you have asked me if you're listening on different platforms how you can rate and review, and the answer to that is you can't. <laughs> so if you're on Apple Podcasts, a rate rating and review would be wonderful. And if you're listening elsewhere, I would love it if you would share the show with your friends with your family. You could take a screenshot of you listening to the show and post it on social media if that's your jam. Or, hey, just send me a little note. Let me know how it's landing for you. I always love to hear from you. Also, update, we're on Amazon Music now. So if you're an Amazon Music listener and that's your thing, you can find the Transforming Anxiety podcast over on Amazon Music. So there's a new link in the show notes to that. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see. All right, folks, that's all I've got for you today. I have a great listener question that I'm going to talk to next week. So stay tuned for that. It's a really fantastic question. I think it's something that a lot of you may be thinking and wondering about. So I think that's going to be an important episode. So I will see you next week at the same time, same place for that. And until then, everyone, please take care of yourselves. Do you have someone to help you with your stress, anxiety, worry, and overwhelm? If not, I would love to be your coach. The Fierce Calm Project is my virtual coaching program where we get to go in on topics like this one, and I can help you apply these lessons to your life so that you are creating your own transformation. We do live coaching calls, guided meditations, on-demand yoga classes. We hold book club where we read books your neighborhood book club won't. And there's lots of bonus content that I've created just for you. 
when you're ready to take what you're learning on the podcast to a whole other level, then come on over and check out the Fierce Calm Project at kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash fiercecalmproject. 